Um, thank you very much for inviting me here today to come and talk to you about what we do in Parliament. It's not just about what I do generally. This is about what we do to do with melanomas. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't here yesterday and I can't stay beyond the break this morning because I've got a million and one other things to do. But um, I think this is a really important conference and I think it's great that it started and I'm sure it'll go from strength to strength. Now, I'm not just talking as a member of parliament about melanomas. I'm talking about it from a perspective where my brother died from one. Um, he would have been 70 this year and he died 16 years ago, uh, the week after his 54th birthday. And he had a situation which I'm sure will sound familiar, and we did hear about GPs and how hard it is for them, but he went to his doctor three times in a year to say, I'm really worried about this mole on my face. And the doctor said, oh, no, no, it's absolutely fine, don't worry about it. And actually, if that GP had looked at his previous notes, he'd have seen that Michael didn't go to the doctor. He just wasn't that sort of person. He wasn't one that was a worried well that was in there all the time. He only went when he was really concerned. But his doctor ignored him. The third time he went, at the end of the year, he said, oh, well, all right then. I don't think there's anything wrong, but I'll send you off to go and have it tested. So, of course, he went off, had it taken off, the biopsy was done. Immediately they rang him and said, come back, we need to take more it's a melanoma. Of course, none of us had ever heard of a melanoma at that stage. So we didn't really know what it meant, but he, he realised it was serious. Now, we don't know why he got it, because nobody does know. But I do know that when we were children, you didn't have some factor creams. You just put a bit of Nivea on. And you, we went to Skegness on the East Coast for holidays, and we got burnt. I mean, I've got burnt so often, I can't tell you. And I've gone to bed and I can't wrinkle my back because it hurts so much. Um, but also, he did live in Africa for a couple of years. So whether that was it, I don't know. He did an outdoor job most of his life. He worked on farms. And, but he always wore a cap. But I don't think he'd ever, ever put cream on. And it wasn't something that we really discussed. Anyway, his... Um, uh, taking it off, it seemed all right. But then a little while later, he had to then have 17... He, he went to the Marsden, and they sent him to Addenbrooks, where they did the surgery. He had 17 um, lymph nodes taken out of his neck, half his shoulder muscle, and he was never able to work again. And I, I can't actually remember how many years it was, but it, it couldn't have been much more than three years. And, of course, then he died, leaving... It's not just him. Of course, he's leaving two teenage children who needed his care and support, which, of course, one of them has never quite succeeded in life because he didn't have a strong father there to look after him. So that's why I got involved when I first went into Parliament in 2010. Um, there was already the Melanoma Task Force set up by somebody called Sean Phillips, I think her name was. She retired in 2015, and that's when I took on the group because I felt it was really important because it is a cancer that's a bit of a Cinderella. People don't really know about it. Many people have never heard of it. So I decided I would get involved with this melanoma task force, and it's comprised of patient groups, charity groups like Melanoma UK and like Skin who are here today and Melanoma Focus who come along to our meetings. But we also have GPs, skin cancer nurses, dermatologists, oncologists and surgeons. It also contains representatives from the National Cancer Action Team and the Na National Cancer Intelligent Network. And this task force was originally established to make practical rec recommendations as to how the prevention and treatment of skin cancer, and particularly melanoma, um, the deadliest form of skin cancer, could be improved. And we all know it could be improved. So, sorry, it was Sean James, not Sean Phillips. Um, I took over, as I say, in 2015. And we meet several times a year. There's been a bit of a hiccup because we've had something called an election, um, which has thrown us off course. So we will be having another meeting soon. And we've, over the years, we've had a lot of meetings that have involved a lot of people. We've had 
meetings with NHS England to discuss the cancer strategy and the progress of the new cancer alliances and the future of the NHS peer review and the allocation of transformational funding for cancer services. We've had conversations with the National Clinical Director for Cancer, highlighting the importance of early diagnosis and the importance of high quality dermatology as part of that care pathway for skin cancer and consideration of the uptake of new melanoma therapies. And also one of the most important things in my view as a lay person, how to raise awareness about melanomas. Um, excellent, oops, excuse me. There's, be, there's been some really good work achieved by the task force efforts um, because we've secured national media coverage over our work in publishing the Mole and Skin Check Guidelines, which was launched in June 2011, just after I got elected. And something that I did was I got a copy of that sent to every single one of my GP practices in my constituency. Interesting result, um, my GP actually said to me, well, thank you very much, Pauline, for sending it. Um, but we leave all that to the young ones in the practice. I don't have anything to do with it. But he's retired now, and a younger one, but not a young one, but senior partner actually has taken on board being the partner that deals with melanomas and skin cancers. So he takes a particular interest. So whenever I go and see him, I don't just go and see what I need to see him about. I have a little consultation about melanomas with him as well. So that's good. But some of the practices didn't read it. Some of them would have put it on the shelf and not done anything with it, which is disappointing. I know they're incredibly busy, but this was a very considered report done not by members of parliament. We just facilitated it. It was done by clinicians and patient groups and others who put, had input into it. And I hope that some of you may have seen it but you may not, I think it's out of print now, but it will be on our website if you want to have a look at it. Um, when we had the launch, it was attended by 150 clinicians, parliamentarians and patient group representatives from across the skin cancer community and other industries. It was also supported by the celebrity makeup artist, Millie Kendall, television broadcaster, Sarah Carwood, and actress, Gemma Murner. And this event launched, marked the launch of guidelines to help hair and beauty professionals spot the signs of skin cancer in their clients. Um, now, obviously, they're not trained to um, diagnose anything. But somebody like your hairdresser, or if you go and have massages and things, they might spot differences in moles that you haven't noticed because you're looking at these things all the time. But a, a professional that you go to maybe every six weeks for a haircut, might spot something that you don't see. So it was, we thought it was important to raise awareness amongst those people to be able to help. Um, we've established a, a pathway expert working group to create a best practice pathway for patients. And we've published a series of papers to help improve melanoma treatment and diagnosis in the UK, including the 2020 Skin Cancer Vision, which sets out how skin care cancer cancer care and services should evolve over the next five years to provide the best results for patients. But it identifies a number of challenges um, and opportunities for skin cancer patients, including the need for a national prevention campaign for skin cancer, including the importance of sun safety. I mean, we've got a beautiful day out there and many people say, oh, we shouldn't be sitting in here, we should be sitting out there in that beautiful sunshine. As everybody in this room knows, beautiful sunshine isn't always that beautiful because it has consequences unless you're very careful. Um, we're very keen to ensure that there's adequate funding and support for the skin cancer nurse specialists, um, making sure that the exciting new advances in skin cancer are made available to patients as soon as possible. 17 out of 20 of our recommendations were implemented by the Department for Health which was very encouraging. I've also worked on the subject of melanoma in Parliament outside of the task force. I've made quite a lot of speeches. I've put in written questions because I am so keen to get it right for melanoma patients and because it isn't something that is very often talked about. We hear about all sorts of other cancers. Um, obviously, breast cancer is the one where the people that started that were brilliant because they've raised it up so more money is spent on 
breast cancer than probably any other cancer. So it's, it's about making a noise about the things that you care about. Um, and I think this is something that we all should, should do. Um, and I, as I say, I've put up quite a lot of questions into Parliament. I decided to take up melanoma as a particular cause once I got into Parliament after meeting Jill, Jill Nuttall, at the Conservative Party conference in 2011. I hadn't long been elected. In fact, I think it was 2010 when I got elected in the May and went to the conference in the October. And she was passionate about it, as she is, and it's a shame she's not here today, but we have got representatives of Melanoma UK who are at the back there. Um, she was inspirational, really, and she chatted to me for about an hour talking about what she'd been doing, and that's when I decided I would get involved um, because it's so important that somebody's... You've got a voice in Parliament, and you have got a voice in me. Um, so I, I talked to Gillian about my um, brother. I talked to her about the things that she'd been doing, and I talked to her about how she was moving Melanoma UK forward. And she's done a huge, huge amount of work. Um, we've had some of her patients uh, that she's been supporting have come to meet us in Parliament. Of course, sadly, um, a number of those patients are no longer with us. But you don't forget those patients. Um, there was one lady who came who had, I'd never heard of it, ocular melanoma. Uh, she was a GP, she was incredibly fit, and she thought she was going to make it. Sadly, she didn't. Um, so since then, we've been in touch, Jill and I, um, regularly, and she has done so much successfully getting patients on the NHS treated um, with ipilimumab and raising significant levels of funding. Um, so I'm delighted to have been able to support her in that. Now, you'll see a little bit later a clip from... Um, a local broadcast uh, in the East Midlands, because I'm from Derbyshire, there was a, a man called Colin Bloomfield who was a radio presenter. He was 33. When he was 21, he had been diagnosed with melanoma, but it was in his groin region, and it wasn't as if he was a sun worshipper. He was quite a pale young man, and... I don't think he'd ever really sat in the sun much. But anyway, he'd been diagnosed at 21 with a melanoma. At 32, it returned, and it returned very, very vigorously. Um, he'd, he'd done a lot of work on radio since he was 16. He was a fantastic radio presenter. Um, he set up, before he died, he set an, an initiative to try to get sun safety out there and talking about people. So Derbyshire, I think, is a bit ahead of the curve because of Colin. And um, what he wanted to do was to make Derbyshire and East Staffordshire, because that's the region that um, the, the radio covers, the sun safe capital of the UK, raising awareness about skin cancer and helping to prevent it. He had an initial target of £50,000, which was set to make... 100 schools in the area, sun safe, for a six, over a six-month campaign. This was met within six weeks. Eventually, £175,000 was raised and 200 schools in the area were made sun safe. During this campaign, sadly, he did die. Um, and the appeal was extended to, due to the popularity and success by everybody and it continued for a further year, so a lot of money was raised. And that money, additional money was raised over and above the 200 schools. We had some sun shelters put in parks and launches, and in fact, you'll see that happen with his mother, who launched the first one in a park in my constituency. Um, it's really important that, that people understand what this is about, and something that I do... If I'm walking around the streets, as you know, at election time, we deliver thousands of leaflets, so I'm out there. I have challenged builders who... I don't know if you've talked about builders at all. You've talked about gardeners and, and safety, but builders are at huge risk. They, on a nice day like this, they'll be out there, no top on. And I challenge them, I shout at them and say, I hope you put some sun cream on, 
And they say, oh, no, no. And actually, one of them, I actually said, I hope you put some sun cream on. He said, no, no, it's not that strong. I said, actually, it is, because it was a day like today. And I said, haven't you heard of Colin Bloomfield? Because it was all the way through this. And he said, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's not me. And he said, actually, I've had a, a mole removed. So he knew the risk, but he still took no notice. So I think there's a big education job to be done there. But going back to Colin's um, campaign before he died, um, Skin got involved, who are at the back there, and they're based not very far away from me in Nottingham. So eventually, 45,000 school children and 20,000 parents were educated on the message of sun safety. And Skin facil facilitated 597 skin checks on the BBC bus in the region, and melanomas and cancer were identified. They were spotted, and they went on for further, um, further um, tests. And Skin attended uh, the Derbyshire Day offering skin checks. 10,000 visitors took away educational sun safety skin cancer booklets. So Derbyshire, as I say, I believe we're a bit ahead of the curve. doesn't mean people take any notice, but they do know about it more. So alongside the work with the Colin Bloomfield Appeal, Skin had done a huge amount for Derbyshire and the wider UK through a, a huge number of initiatives. 250,000 children have been educated about sun, sun safety nationally. That's huge. Corporate health and wellbeing days attended and facilitated by Derby Hospital, Virgin Doncaster Hospitals, Redhead Day and others. And projects including Sun Safe Schools and Sun Safe Nurseries in Derbyshire, which I, one of my schools um, has really taken this on board. And you'll see not a clip of them, but a clip of the kids singing um, Slip Slap Slop or Slip Slop Slap. I can't remember which way around it is. But they know. They know and they love it. And they do this all the time. They test the, the sun, they check and they put sun cream on. And I think that's incredibly important. Um, so to become an accredited SunSafe school, you, four steps need to be um, put in place to be accredited. You've got to send a letter home to each parent with a copy of Sun Safety and Skin Cancer booklets, telling parents about sunscreen, sun hats, and sunburn. Um, they have to provide a shaded area for children uh, or take a pledge to investigate funding for a shaded area have to hold an introductory assembly to introduce the scheme and key sun safe messages to the children and every class has to undertake a, a question and an answer session uh, on the sun safe lesson plan so daily support goes to 3,000 schools nurseries and 160 workplaces in relation to policy and sun safety so skin are doing a huge amount of work they also supply uh, free sun safety and prevention material to over 150 dermatology departments in hospitals and clinics for patients to pick up and take home. Thank ten, is that 10 minutes or 10 seconds? <laughs> 10 minutes, that's fine. Um, so they have done a lot to raise awareness, as have other charitable groups, and I think that they work really hard on your behalf. Um, but, of course, for you, most of you, you've already got it and had it, but... Actually, it's about stopping more and more people getting it. Um, and I think that's incredibly important. So the NHS and public health campaign be clear on cancer doesn't include melanomas. Skin cancer as a whole is neglected. The five main cancers, as I said before, are breast, bowel, lung, ovarian, and bladder, stroke, kidney cancer. But actually, I think... Um, I can't think what the other one is. That's um, pancreatic cancer, yes, which is actually quite a deadly one. Um, but I think that's rising up the agenda because people are talking about it. We had a member of parliament die from it very suddenly. So we do pick on issues in parliament. And I, what I would advise you all to do is to talk to your member of parliament because you are from all over the country ask them to get involved with the task force ask them to talk about melanomes in fact educate them because many of them won't know anything about it it's only personal experience has made the fact that i understand what it's about and i know how deadly it is and i'm really very twitchy i've had a lot of moles removed i've had uh, lesions burnt off 
because I'm so nervous about it. Because when they say to me, it's all right, it's just precancerous, I say, uh-uh, no, it might be precancerous, it might turn into cancer, just take it off. Whatever it is, take it off. And I've been lucky, I have managed to get them taken off. But not everybody is quite as forceful as I am. And I think you actually do need to make your voices known and tell people more about what's happening out there. So that's what I'm all about. I want to show you two clips now, which are going to be on the screen. One is a, the BBC report about the SunSafe, um, the launch of the SunSafe um, uh, shades, and then we're going to have the skin song, which I think is fun and it's something to a lighter note on which to finish. But thank you all very much. Stop, stop. 